Hi, my name's Ben Parsons, and today I'll be presenting to you a unit of study I've developed for the VET unit, Follow Workplace Standards and Practices. I've designed this unit according, unit according to the principles of understanding by design, or UBD. And to put things really simply, UBD is just an approach to designing curriculum that focuses on developing uh, big ideas or big concepts, as well as uh, skills and knowledge. And one question that UBD teachers are always asking is how do we make it more likely by our design that more students really understand what they are asked to learn? Um, so that leads us into um, yeah, the definition of what understand is. So um, according to Wiggins and Matai, understanding is making connections and binding together knowledge uh, into something that makes sense of things. Whereas without understanding, we might just see unclear, isolated or unhelpful facts. Uh, Bloom, uh, who developed Bloom's taxonomy, uh, knew that performance like, or doing things lay at the heart of understanding. Um, and he thought that understanding was being able to effectively use or transfer what students know in context and use it in realistic tasks and settings, for example, work. Um, so therefore, um, curriculum designed according to the principles of UBD uh, is just something that takes facts and knowledge, things we teach every day and skills, and turns it into um, transfer or transferable or conceptual understandings that students can apply or perform in different and progressively more difficult situations such as work. And that's why I think UBD and um, VET units of competency go really well together to focus on performance and performance criteria and it just seems to work well with our, our competency-based assessment. So let's have a look at the unit plan now. So UBD uh, uses what's called a backward planning or backward design approach and the first, so where the first the focus is on assessment goals and then evidence and then the learning plan. So the first thing we need to do is think of um, goals, we, the things we want our students to be able to um, do and learn uh, at the end of the unit. So I've chosen these from the elements of the unit of competency, research workplace standards and practices, and apply routine workplace standards and practices. And from there, we need to develop an understanding. So that's our big conceptual, uh, big conceptual idea that the students will work towards. So I've designed this students will understand that working ethically and responsibly is important for both employees and employers. So if students do develop this understanding, they'll be able to keep it for the rest of their lives in any job they do, whether they're an employee or an employer, and they'll be able to transfer it to progressively more difficult uh, situations. So once we've got an understanding, we then need to develop what's called an essential question. And essential questions are basically open and debatable questions with no right or wrong answer. And it's hoped that these will guide students towards the conceptual understanding. And it's hoped that even more questions uh, will emerge and be encouraged uh, as this question is unpacked throughout the class or throughout the course of study. After understandings, we then go into our bread and butter, our skills and knowledge. And so knowledge is basically just our underpinning knowledge, um, facts and figures and things like that that students need to know to pass the unit. <coughs> and skills are things that students will, be, will need to be able to do or perform. And I use the word perform there because we can take these straight from our performance criteria in our unit of competency. Um, the second stage in UBD plan is assessment evidence. So this is defining what constitutes assess, uh, acceptable uh, evidence to say that our student is competent or not. And I'll show you the um, assessment documents towards the end, but so um, the, the performance task that these students will be doing is matching some terms, answering the essential question, creating some tables, completing some diagrams, and some workplace checklists and performance reports. Other evidence we can collect during the course of study is some formative assessment quizzes I've designed, some Kahoot games, some Flipgrid, Flipgrid responses, and of course, our old direct questioning and direct observation. So the final stage in UBD, uh, the backward planning model, is the learning plan. And that's where we set out what actually happens in the classroom. So I've decided to um, plan these sessions according to a gradual release of responsibility model of instruction, um, which is put simply, I do, we do, you do. 
So it generally starts out with a teacher setting a warmer to engage the students and then um, having an I do phase where which is um, maybe some lecture, demonstration, modeling and explanation. Then there's a we do phase where the teacher scaffolds the learning of the students with some support. And finally, we want to have learner independence. So that's where the um, the learner is doing things on their own, maybe with maybe in some peer group, uh, some large groups, then small groups, then independently. Um, I've desi- designed a lot of authentic and student-centered class using technology and um, pen and paper. Um, at the end of every lesson, there's some kind of formative assessment. I like to use Microsoft Forms quizzes for those. I'll show you some samples towards the end. Um, I also use this teaching technique a lot, which is called the Harkness discussion. It's basically the Socratic method, uh, and um, it's a it's a good way to unpack essential questions and have critical thinking and um, deep discussions in in the classroom. Um, I've also had uh, planned a lot of activities that provoke critical thinking and evaluation, such as drawing Venn diagrams, looking at relationships and differences. Um, for these telephone and remote lessons, um, I thought it might be possible to uh, maybe use Microsoft Teams or some kind of video conferencing software. If not, we could also do it asynchronously using an app called Flipgrid, which I'll briefly show you in a few minutes. Um, again, I've, uh, at the end of every week, I've planned a weekly metacognitive e- exit ticket where students reflect on um, what they're learning well and how, and maybe some strategies they, c- they could use to learn better. I've got a lot of uh, authentic websites here, Safe Work New South Wales website, Fair Work Ombudsman, Ombudsman website, um, lots of things the students are going to need to know when they go into work. Um, I've also used uh, what I think is a chunked and gradated approach with the elements. So I've put the easy elements first and there's not too much for the students to take in in one lesson. And that develops into more difficult, um, more difficult work with the elements from the units of competency. After that, um, towards the end, uh, for one of the uh, virtual lessons, I thought that it would be um, possible for um, students to go on either a, f- a field trip to their own workplace or to another workplace. And if that's not possible due to the COVID nineteen shutdown or just due to logistics. I thought we could use technology such as Google Expeditions Careers, which is a free virtual reality app um, to replace that. So basically Google uh, Expeditions has several hundred uh, different careers students can explore in virtual reality. It's free. Um, uh, Students would only need a Google Cardboard device, which costs a couple of dollars, which could be sourced for this. Towards the end of the unit of study, I've got um, a much more focus on summative assessment once all, once all the content and skills have been delivered. I've also got a course feedback form for uh, for reflective learning and uh, to improve teaching and re- improve the course. So here's some examples of some of the classroom activities. I use micro- Microsoft Forms quite a lot. Uh, Each lesson, I can design questions as they emerge in class or questions I've uh, planned beforehand. Uh, Here's an example here. I can project it very easily onto the screen using a QR code and students can complete it on their phones. Otherwise, I can send them a link to their email uh, or uh, if technology access is an issue, I can uh, just print it out and use pen and paper method. Um, Also, I like to use weekly metacognitive uh, exit tickets to encourage metacognition, uh, asking students what they've learned well this week, what would they like to know more about, etc. Lots of collaborative tasks using uh, Google and Microsoft applications. Here's a Google Doc that encourages students to research collaboratively, uh, very student-centred. Here's a um, using Google Drawings, getting students to think about the organizational structure of where they work or a company they've made up and um, and lay it out collaboratively um, with that application. Uh, Microsoft Flipgrid is a very good flipped classroom tool. Um, it would be great for the, for the telephone or remote lessons that were planned in the course. I can upload a video here to students and then they can respond with a video um, or other kind of submission themselves. Uh, it's very differentiated, which is very good. And here's a bit of an article on Google Expeditions and how it can allow students to explore careers where they may not be able to do it uh, do it in person. 
So um, another important part of planning a unit is differentiation strategies. And I've got some different strategies here for varying abilities, ESL learners, special education needs, computer skills, and access to technology. Uh, with the varying abilities, during this unit of study, there has been a, um, a large focus on group work, and that was not accidental. I've, um, so I'm trying to appeal here to Vygotsky's zone of proximal development. Um, so the care for selection of groups means that I could pair uh, stronger students with lower ability students, and they could scaffold their learning and move them from the red zone here into the blue zone. And then as the content gets uh, more difficult, um, generally they would move from the blue zone to the green zone. Um, I've also got some strategy, strategies, strategies here for ESL learners, such as some authentic English practice, and some more Z ZPD stuff. Um, for special education needs learners, I could use closed captions on my slides and videos, um, some differentiation strategies here for computer skills and access to technology as well. So uh, for the assessment workbook, I've adapted this one from Equella and I've just uh, basically amended it so it fits in with the UBD paradigm. So here, um, I've just added an understandings and essential questions section to the beginning um, where students can unpack the essential question and provide evidence of how they, um, they understand the understanding. So moving on from there, we go into our knowledge and skills. So um, students have to list three employer rights, three employer responsibilities, uh, the same for employees, describe an organizational workplace, uh, so design an organizational structure, they know about that, they've done that in class, um, answer some questions on a workplace culture, which they've done in class. Uh, got to complete a few questions about these elements here, which they've explored in class. And then they've got their um, workplace practical documents, which includes some checklists and some reflections. Uh, so that's basically it for the summative assessment and for my presentation on the unit. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm free to take any questions.